Hello, there we are again, three o'clock on Tuesday, and this time we're talking about your body. Um, thank you for tuning in once again. If you're here, um, please give me a shout out. I'm finally learning that all these little hearts and things that fly by are you guys. Um, I didn't quite realize that before, but hey, you learn as you go along, right? So here we are. Um, yes, and before we get into the body and how... Um, how in particular I've been able to alter the way um, my, my understanding of my body and, and how to work with it instead of against it. Uh, before we get into that, I'm going to tell you a little story because you know me, I love storytelling. Um, uh, this is with my mom. So I was actually ironing the other day something for her and um, she walked by me and she smacked my bum and she said, how did you do that? How did you how did you lose it? And then she, she answered her own question uh, a couple moments later. And she's like, I know, I know you talk to your body. I know. Um, and as funny and un as unconventional, um, as weird as that may sound, um, it's the thing that's worked. Um, what can I tell you? There's so much, there's so many places to go here. And I think I'll have to do a another video already. But um, if you know me at all, you know um, I, I've struggled with my body for a very, very long time. This is something that I've written about in blogs. I've, I've uh, YouTubed it before. Um, but um, suffice it to say, and let, let's make a long story short, um, I've, I've had issues with my body for as long as I can remember. Um, at the very early age of five or six, I was already sneaking food in the middle of the night while my parents were watching TV, um, t and taking it to, taking it to my bed and eating it there. Um, just slowly, slowly, you know, creeping in a space of, um, uh, uncertainty. Um, by the time I was already 13, 14, um, I was anorexic, um, which led into bulimia, which led into just so many problems. I mean, I was, um, I think already at 13, 14, every time I had a meal, I would go and, um, and exercise right after it. So um, if I was eating three, four times a day, I was also exer exercising three, four times a day. Now, you think about your child, you think about your daughter who's 13 years old, and imagine that um, it, um, all of that, I, I pulled myself out of the anorexia, bulimia, um, but never really quite got myself out of um, the troubles with my body. And I can't say that I did that until um, probably seriously in the last four years. Now, um, I, I don't want you to think this is just a, bit, a video about, um, about weight loss because it's actually about, I mean, in the last four videos that I've done, uh, I've been talking about your um, or our emotional health and our mental well-being. And, and here I very much, um, where, where the body is concerned, the mind does not leave. So um, this is kind of tying the two together to... Um, to get you in a place where you want to be, whether that is weight loss or whether that is work, whether it's just feeling better, to be able to connect your mind and body together um, is the way to freedom. You know, I've talked about doing boot camp before, and this is um, where um, what I was talking about in a previous video, you know, being boot camp queen and all of that. I went from being anorexic and bulimic and then um, just backtracking a bit back to that. Um, going through those things and then eventually um, landing in the fitness industry because that makes it made so much sense. I love fitness and um, but actually, you know, in hindsight, it was my addiction. It was my obsession. So being in the industries where I got to hide um, and I hid for a long time, um, even even coming to Slovakia seven years ago and running my boot, boot camp program, that was um, it was, it was 
the greatest hiding place to allow me to continue to obsess over my body and have the perfect body. And, you know, if I'm teaching other people how to eat, um, I, I mean, I, I, I was trying to maintain this incredibly ridiculous standard for myself. Um, and all the while I was crumbling inside. So um, what changed and, and how, how, how do you change? Um, well, there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful quote by Mary Engelbright, I hope I said that right, um, which is kind of the premise for everything that I do now. It's been my practice for the last few months. And that is, if you don't like what you see, then change the way you see it. Um, so whether it's the body or whether it's a person, whether it's a situation, um, it very much, um, depends on your attitude and that's why going back to the body is so important because if we're not paying attention to our bodies we're not quite paying attention uh, or or if we're not paying attention to our bodies it allows us to to just lose focus um on on the greater things at hand the greater um i mean when you are more in touch with you when you are in yoga with your body um, you start to become in yoga with your life. And yoga, um, aside from being the physical practice that we see and we hear about everywhere, actually means union. And that's how I mean it. So, so what have I done? I, I would say um, in the last few years, it would be since about 2013 after a breakup, um, I, 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 things just weren't going right. In, in like sort of the rest of my life, I just came out of this breakup, um, didn't really have a job, didn't quite know what I was doing, but at the same time was was gaining an immense amount of peace um, in my life. And what, um, I mean, my body's been the sort of bane of my existence my whole life. My happiness depended on it. Um, and, and you could ask any of my, my ex-husband, my ex-fiance, the, 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 the people that were the closest in my life, um, how, how, um, predominant my hate for my body was, um, in our relationship, in my happiness. So, um, yes, a few years ago, uh, I, I got into the practice of when I was showering the more showering in the morning to, as I was cleaning my body, just to say thanks to each body part that, that I would wash. So thank you to my hands for, for making my food. Um, thank you to my feet for walking me forward. Um, my legs for holding me up high, um, for my voice, my everything. Um, and, and I would just go through and it didn't take long. It doesn't take long. And I think this is the misconception um, that if you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to change your life, that you've got to do all these things, you've, you've got to go outside of yourself. But really, what I would like to impress upon here is that it starts with you. Um, it starts with you right now, sitting right where you are, not doing anything different, except while I'm talking, just saying, I love you to yourself. So, um, thanks for that. The thumbs up, whoever that was. I finally noticed that. Um, so, um, what I started to do, I, I started to uh, say thank you to my body as I would wash. Um, later on, I, I fell in sort of in line with um, with Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay. I picked up a whole bunch of things there. Um, you guys know very well, if you've been following me for the last little while, that um, I was a big um, supporter of emotional freedom technique, um, otherwise known as EFT, and that was where you were tapping on your body. I've still got videos on YouTube if you're interested. Um, however, I would like to say that um, the thing that helps you right now um, is something that you'll explode out of your breakout of because you've grown and you'll always need something more. So that's why I no longer do an EFT. I fell in line with, um, with what I'm talking about right now and that's just the ultimate, the ultimate tool and that is yourself and that is love. Um, 
so what what now does my practice look like and why um why i'd love to share this with you is again because it's not just about the body um because in me getting literally the body of my dreams uh, you know when i was in a young kid when I was in high school I used to pray for exactly what I look like today um, it might not be I might not be the image of what someone else has and what their dreams are what they want to look like but this is me this is and this is what I'm talking about so um, going into that um, I, I've been able to take I am taking the things that I've learned from the experience in shaping my body to now shaping my life um, which is why I share this. I mean, there's been many, there have been many times where I've wanted to talk about this, but I didn't quite feel like um, I was ready to share. I didn't quite feel like I was ready um, at a place within myself in union, union with body and mind to reach you, to reach out to you. So, um, so here we are today. Um, and, and simply, quite simply, now how I um, go forward in my life, my, my small little practice of self-love is waking up in the morning um, and doing jack shit. Um, I don't think I've mentioned that in the video, that I don't exercise um, and I eat absolutely everything that I love. Um, I do happen to follow um, a, a plant-based diet just because that feels right for me. Um, I, yeah, that just feels right for me. Um, I, I don't exercise per se. Um, as I mentioned, I walk and when I walk, I walk slow. Um, I, I think that some quite possibly like a, a like a cancer patient. I, I've got a 75 year old friend that I walk with sometimes in the morning and she walks faster than me. You know what for me there's just no rush there's no there's no need to torture my body anymore god bless like it's it's i've put myself through so much already and i bet you have too um and 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 for me it's, t it's it was just time to stop that madness and that's why i share this with you because you don't have to pound your body i mean if you want to do like the crossfit sort of stuff the boot camp sort of stuff if you need to feel the pain for what is it um no pain no gain if that's you so be it you know love what you do enjoy it but if you're going to the gym and you're you're kind of like you're struggling and you're sore all the time and um it just doesn't it just doesn't feel quite right let me offer you an alternative and and that is to just stop stop everything and you find the way you find the way that works for you so even after you know after i'm gone here and you've listened to this and you know um what, what i say for me doesn't quite resonate with you good i'm don't don't do anything i do you please walk away and you just figure this out for yourself and if i may encourage you take your time take your time like when i um i would say that now it's it's probably taken me, I started on this, this really intense journey about four years ago, three years ago, um, but it was last year that I stepped up my game, um, very much with my husband, with Uri, very much on the same path and wavelength, um, and he inspired me to do a 21-day water fast. I did that, came out of it, and was like, um, not quite it didn't quite um, work the first time round, and I'll explain that in a moment. Um, it took me a few months of contemplating all over again why I would do it again, and and when I did, it was for all the right reasons. So I came out of a 26-day water fast, eating nothing. I think I ate a spoon of honey every now and again, um, but really no chewable food, um, and that that allowed me to to rewrite my own sort of program as to how to live, how to thrive, how, not not survive, but really, really thrive, and how to um, how to walk forward writing my own rules. So so coming out of a 26 day water fast, I never now if if I'm out without food for four hours, it's okay. Um, whereas before I'd be like, oh my god, my blood sugar is going through the roof, and I need a banana, or I need some orange juice, I need this. I'm cranky. Don't talk to me. Um, you know me. You know me when I haven't had any food. I'm not 
you know, there's all these excuses. And now it's just like, do you know what? Have a glass of water. <laughs> um, so I don't subscribe to that. Um, you must eat between three and five times a day. I question that. And, and I encourage you to question that too. Um, it works for some people. Um, and I, I think it's sort of a cookie cutter thing. But again, don't listen to anything that I say. You figure out you for yourself, right? Um, going back to what I do for myself now, um, and in terms of sort of exercise and, and food, um, I, I wake up in the morning, um, I'll come back to this. I was saying I wake up in the morning and I do jack shit, which is absolutely true. Um, and I, I sit in the, um, I sit in the living room, which is in front of, um, the deck outside and I just stare outside and, and, you know, to be honest with you, I don't know how long I'm sitting there for. I don't, I don't time it. Time is not an issue anymore. There's no more interval training of like, I've got to do this 20 seconds on and 20 seconds off. There isn't that anymore. It's very much just stopping and allowing things to come to you. And that's exactly what happens. So I sit down um, and I watch the big tree ahead of me, um, birds land on it and fly away. Um, I listen, I listen, I hear things. Um, and, and, and that's it. It's just quiet time. It's me time. Um, and, and, uh, sometimes I do bring about uh, a paper and a pencil with me because it's very much an inspiring time. I would say I, I generally remember the things that, that come across in my mind and in, in, in me time and still time. Um, but, uh, I, I do that, um, and I follow sort of stillness time with, um, I, I fall into a meditation and that's just, it's sort of my way of connecting to the earth and connecting to the universe at the same time. So, um, and that kind of sets me up for my day. So it's me rooting first, literally rooting myself and visualizing that and having the light of the light of the earth ground me, surround me, um, harmonize me when, when I come, when I connect the universe and mother earth through me together. Sounds really, I, I get it. It sounds out there. It sounds totally out there. I think four years ago, I couldn't share this with you. Um, but I share this with you now with such conviction because there's nowhere else to go except inside yourself. Um, so following, following my, my meditation, um, where I just, you know, bring myself to balance, um, and, and, and really properly awaken to today, not yesterday, not bring in yesterday's things, leave them where they are, leave all the people and mess, of whatever I had in yesterday, leave them there. Um, so I come to out of my meditation. Um, and, uh, and I, I actually wake up my body. And that's really simple. I start down at my toes. And I just I'm tapping on my toes like this right from the tips of my toes, up my feet, up my legs, um, everywhere on my body, I'm just tapping. And it's my way. It's this is an emotional freedom technique. It's it's not EFT or faster EFT. And it's just it's just hello. It's just hello. Here I am. Here we are. We're going to do this together. Um, because how often like how how I'm curious, actually, if someone would just pop in and say, that's really weird. I'd love to hear that. Um, I think it's really weird. I think it's really strange because what do you do? What do you normally do with your body? Nothing. Um, I mean, the, there's the obvious. Um, we have sex with someone else. We, um, we hug and whatever. But what do you actually do for yourself is what I'm asking. Like say, for example, your wrist is hurting. What do you do? Um, and I bet nine times out of ten, it's going to be like, oh, fuck, my wrist is hurting and I can't write and I can't do this and I can't do that. Um, but who, who out there is actually saying, oh, my God, my wrist is hurting. There's something that I've done. And what can I do? Um, and what can you do is to embrace your wrist, right? Instead of, instead of um, what we always do, and that's come down and get angry. And now I'm not going to be able to do that. Why don't we turn around and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Um, I don't know what I've done to cause this pain, um, but I allow, now you're talking to your pain like it's a five-year-old child, 
tell me what you need from me and how we can how I can take away this pain from you rather than just resisting it. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to talk to your body like it's a five-year-old child in pain rather than um, rather than like throwing it away and not wanting to deal with it? Um, I, I would love to know what you think about this um, because I know it sounds strange and I know it's unconventional. This is the way that I've dropped weight. This is the way that I've changed my body. This is the way that I'm changing my life. So after this little practice of sitting still in the meditation and waking up my body, I do, I, I stretch, which is maybe four minutes or five minutes or half an hour, it's sort of yoga style stretching. And, um, and I walk into my day like that. And um, does it always work? And that do I, am I always balanced and harmonious and happy-go-lucky throughout the day? No, I'm not. And do I do it every single morning? No, I don't. Um, I encourage you to find your groove, as I said a number of times in this, in this talk, find your own way and be consistent with your way, whatever that means to you. Especially if, you know, if you're, if you suffer from depression, um, like I have, I, I, in that period of anorexia and bulimia that I spoke of earlier, gosh, I went through years of depression. I've gone through uh, the stuff that, that self-destruction, um, I, I used to beat myself up literally punching myself in the head because I, I just couldn't figure things out. I couldn't understand how to lose weight or I couldn't understand how I can't get a job, how I can't make my relationship work. Um, yeah, I used to beat myself up in my 20s um, and, and now being 40 years old, um, you know what, it, if, if you're still figuring out your way and you're looking around at the best thing for you, I, I encourage you to tap into yourself. Um, I kind of, I get the feeling I've been all over the place in this video. Um, I've hope, I hope I've made sense for you and at least given you a nugget which you can, which you can build on. Um, and I, I want to go back to, to food and your body um, just for a moment before I close. And that's to say, um, what I do now with my food and what I encourage everyone to do is because I know there's a lot of guilt and shame and frustration and anger and hate around food and the body. I'll go back to saying um, if you don't like what you see, then change the way you see it. Treat your body that way. If you don't like what you see, change the way that you see it. Let's start loving it. Um, you don't like what you're eating, continue to eat it. Continue to eat that piece of chocolate or that whole pizza, whatever it is, but let's change the way we see it, right? Instead of, instead of hating your way through it, love it. Eat that pizza like it's the last thing that you're ever going to eat in life. Eat it like it's, it, it's, it's the greatest gift. At, it is the greatest gift at that very moment to you because when you can, when you can change the way you see things and and especially regards to food, eat it with love instead of with shame or with guilt or anger or frustration or hate. That's the energy that you give to the food and that's the energy that you receive from the food. So that's how you slowly start to change your body is by loving, changing your attitude towards the food. And look, if, you're, if, you're to, if you go right now, go right now and you're stuck in that, that eating the, the, the issues of eating and body image and stuff, you go, get a, get a pint of ice cream from the freezer, whatever it is, sit there, put your hands around it and say, this is the very best thing I can put into my body and you love that ice cream. Eat it like it's nobody's business, all right? You enjoy that as much as you can and you do that over and over and over again with everything that you eat, whether it's an apple whether it's chocolate, cheesecake, double fudge, whatever, with sprinkles on top. Um, you give love to everything that you eat. This is the very best thing I can put into my body. Um, 
I hope you've enjoyed this talk. Like I said, I hope you've been able to take something from it. I think this is this is a huge, huge subject, and and I've not even hit the tip of the iceberg with it. Um, so I imagine myself doing a series on YouTube, uh, more about what I've gone through and and what we can do for you, um, because this is something that you can come through. If I've come through it after. Uh, I started at, at, at about, what did I say, the age of five having food problems, and now I'm 40, um, and it took me to about 39, so I've been in this a long, long time, so my darling, wherever you are on your on your food journey, your, your body journey, um, we can surely get you to a place where you where you see yourself where you wish to be and then and then start to make the rest of your dreams come true so in in that i close and uh, i have to give special thanks to someone i know uh, one of my mentors who is matt khan who's really really helped me um, along my healing journey um, especially in terms of self-love do, do tune into him um, on, on YouTube. Uh, his channel is True Divine Nature. Um, and he goes into an amazing, amazing detail about how you can make shifts within you. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please do write to me um, with any questions, comments, suggestions. I'd love to hear them. Um, quite possibly what you'd love to hear for next Tuesday. Um, and otherwise, I thank you. I thank you for tuning in. Be good to yourselves. God bless you. Thank you.